want to be very busy. We want to be very productive, right? Um, before I start this training, Alexa, stop. I want to share something. This is just aside from the training. I feel like, um, and I've seen it for the past three years um, happen, you know, within my leaders, within even me sometimes. A lot of us get busy. Like I had one of the girls in my team and she's like, and she was married too, right? And she was doing this business full time. And she's like, Afnan, me and my husband are like, not fighting, but we're not like really on good terms because he keeps telling me, oh, I'm on my phone all day. And I'm like, what are you doing on your phone all day? <laughs> like, no, like really, like, what are you doing on your phone all day? She's like, oh, well, I'm working. I'm like, all day? You better be the crown if you're working all day. What? I'm like, you're not even global. How are you working all day? I'm like, you know, in, in, in a day, there's like, like when we're awake, there's more than 12 hours. Like, there's, let's say there is 16, let's say you sleep a lot, right? 16 hour days. What are you doing with your time? Because we know scrolling through TikTok and social media is not really like productive, right? We know just like, you know, going through the day, passing by is not productive. Sometimes it even happened to me where like, I'm like, oh, I've been working for the past five hours. And then I think I'm like, wait, what did I do the past five hours? Nothing, absolutely nothing. It was a bunch of nonsense that I thought I was doing and I wasn't intentional with my time. So a lot of us, we just got to be intentional. Sometimes if you're intentional, where you're like, okay, in the next 15 minutes, I'm only responding to messages. In the next 30 minutes, I'm only trading this. In the next hour, um, if you really be intentional and you do nothing but the task that you're doing, you can be so productive. What like, and you would literally have like six hours, five hours, four hours a day, and you would probably hit presidential, like easy in less than a year if you really be intentional. But you can do it all day and just like, yeah, you know, I have those things on my list. We'll see how that goes, you know, and then you're like, oh, okay, maybe take a TikTok. And then you watch someone's store and you're like, wow, their life is so nice. I wish that was my life. And then you watch someone else's store and you're like, wow, they're out on a Saturday. And it's like, you just like pass by and nothing happens. Intentional, break down time. Guys, you know, for all my iPhone users, we know we have something on our iPhone. I think like this generation makes it cool which is like the do not DND, do not disturb. It's like, oh, I have it on DND. No, like if you want to do something, I want to be intentional with it, pull your phone on DND and do the thing. Like do it. And you'll, you'll, you'll realize that you can accomplish. I, I, was, I was talking with Jennifer about this, one of my leaders. And she's just like, wow, I was intentional. And I literally did so much in four hours, which usually takes me all day. But she was intentional. Four hours in a day, she did exactly what she would do in a whole day. And it helps. Yes, I'm not 100%. I did it in two hours. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I, you know, my, so my bad. But anyway, um, hello, hello team. Hope all is well. Happy uh, Sunday. It's Sunday, right? Yeah, happy Sunday. Um, I haven't done a training in a minute, but before I share my training, it's going to be really good. Um, I feel like I usually train on social media. And I'm like, I swear we all know social media. It is time to just like give you guys some real sauce on like, what's the difference between successful people and like failures, literally. Um, and let me start by asking you guys this, right? Who here, they don't want to have a mediocre life. They don't want to just pass by. They don't want to just like, you know, get to their 60, 70, 90 years old. And they're like, oh, damn, I really did waste a lot of time. I don't know what I did. It was fun, but like, I didn't reach my, my capabilities. I didn't reach my potential. I didn't really, really like, you know, achieve everything that I want. I wasn't fulfilled, right? So one thing, one, one, one mentality, I'm gonna share a story with this. For me is throughout my whole life, even when it was toward the smaller things, I had this mentality of, I never want to downgrade, right? I never want to downgrade. I never want to just, I don't want to settle, even when it comes to like serving. So a lot of you guys know, you know, I used to be a server. I worked at so many restaurants here in Canada and, you know, it, it, it definitely passed by. I learned a lot, but not really. Um, paid the bills just enough for you to come to work every single month, every single week and never quit because, you know, they paid the bills just barely. Um, Okay, guys, I want you guys to focus. Less ones. It's okay. We got it. Um, 
so I remember, so you know how before you become a waitress, then at least that's that's how it goes in Canada. You gotta become a hostess, right? They train you, whatever, if you're loyal enough, especially if you have no experience, if you've never done it before, they train you enough, whatever, whatever, and then you become a server, right? I lied on my resume. If you look at my resume, it is lies from number one to number 10. Lies upon lies, went to this, did this, fake numbers, fake manager name, fake everything. Like nothing was correct on that resume. I don't know. Like, listen, it was lies on lies. And you know, what's the crazy part? They actually believed it. So, and no one calls here. It's weird. Like people tell you, oh, I'm gonna call to like your previous employee. No one called, or maybe they did call, but it was a fake number, so no one picked up. But beside the point, um, I remember, you know, I, when I first started, well, I, I wanted to become a server, right? Cause one of my friends like, oh, if none, you work at Starbucks, I think you should become a server because you, you can get a lot of tips. And then he broke it down to me. I was like, oh, this is different back in Saudi. We didn't have tips. So he explained it to me where I can make more money in the same hours because people tip good here. And, I'm, and they're like, and he's like, you're cute. I'm like, thank you. Uh, he's like, you, you have a nice smile. Thank you. Uh, you're very nice. Thank you. And I'm like, okay, I can make a lot of tips. So I remember I applied to two jobs. One job was like, you know, a little bit more like breakfast, like very casual, nothing fancy. And then another one was a Brazilian steakhouse. It's a different Brazilian steakhouse than the one that I was working at before, like my last job. It was like a, a nice one, but more like in the suburbs. Applied to two jobs. The breakfast one, Obviously, they took me to the server because I, you know, I was very slick. I'm like, yeah, 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 I've been doing serving my whole life since I was 16. I was like 20 at that time. Yeah, like it's, you know, I just do it. It's like the easiest thing. You see, I have the personality for it, the smile, and they actually believed me and they hired me as a waitress. And I was struggling with everything. I did not know how to hold four plates. I did not know what's this, what's that. Um, who's Matty? Matty, you know... My friend, I don't think you're in the same industry or whatever we're doing here because we're talking a whole different, and by the way, I don't have none. But anyway, beside the point, so Matty, please exit the call. Um, matter of fact, Sanna, let me make you a co-host. So long story short is, <laughs> it's okay, guys. You know, some guys have never seen anything in their life. So when they see like an inch, you know, it's, it's okay. We cry for them. But anyway, um, so one job i became a server other job they hired me as a hostess okay and then they're like oh if you're good within the next two months we can make you a server and i was the best like when i tell you i go above and beyond comes 30 minutes before my shift leaves an hour for my shift goes above and beyond because when i want something y'all know i go crazy and i really wanted to become a server at that brazilian steakhouse because i knew the tips were more and January came and they told me by January, we're going to make you a server. January came. A lot of people quit, you know, people quit. And I went to my manager. I'm like, listen, a lot of people quit. <laughs> I've been here. <laughs> I've been good. I think you should promote me. And he's like, oh, uh, he wanted to, but then another manager had a problem with me. Yeah. Anyway, we're not going to get into like crazy stuff. So one manager wanted me. Another manager said no. And then after a day of them thinking about it, he came up to me and he's like, listen, I don't think you're ready yet. I'm like, how do you know you've never tried me? You've never seen me on the floor, but beside the point, I don't think you're ready yet. We're going to keep you as a hostess for the next month. I'm like, listen, if I'm not a server by tomorrow, I'm quitting. You know, sometimes I have some audacity. I don't know where I got it from. Broke, living at parents' house, like, some audacity to say, oh, I'm going to quit. Like I can get any job. Right. And he's like, Afnan, you know, we really want you to stay. We love your hospitality, but we can't make that happen. I'm like, I quit. No two weeks notice. He looks at me like dead in the eyes. Like, Are you? I'm like, yes, I quit. I told him I do not downgrade. Okay? I, uh, and that happened. And I actually found another job after like not being, not working for another month. And then I worked on, on another job and it was very, very high end. And they hired me as a server, but it was so high end where there's only like 30 seats in the restaurant. And it was just so exclusive, like rich Italian people, probably like all work in the mafia or whatever it is I was hired at. But it was a very bougie, expensive restaurant, like local where the owner comes and shake everyone's. It was crazy, right? Um, and people like tip, like double the bill type of, type of vibe. Like it was, it was really, really crazy. Um, what's happening? I can't even see the comments, by the way. Oh. 
Oh, damn. Anyway, uh, let me make Jenny, since Jenny is here. Jenny, just, you know, I don't know who's uh, who ticked these people off. But anyway, so I I become a, a server and they hired me and then they tried me for, you know, I probably like two weeks. And I, I, I can't lie, you know, I wasn't the best because they wanted me to do things that I've never done before. You know, like open a wine bottle. I'm like, I've never had a, an alcohol in my life. How do you want me to open that? And they treat me and I wouldn't get it. Long story short, he gives me a call after two weeks and he's like, Afnan, I think we should downgrade you to like a food runner uh, for a month. And then after a month, once you're trained, we, I'm going to get you a, a job at my other restaurant that's really, really fancy and you can work there. And I told him, if you do that, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to downgrade. And he's like, well, it's just a month. Take it as a training. I'm like, I don't downgrade. It like it would hurt my ego to downgrade. I'm not gonna downgrade. And he's like, I guess this is where we separate. I, I'm like, I guess yes. But anyway, long story short, in life, sometimes you are gonna have to be that person with the most audacity and know what you bring to the table and know your worth and say no to things, even if from the inside you were shaking and shivering on like, oh my god, what am I gonna do with no job? Okay. But let me start sharing my screen with you guys. Um, I have a PowerPoint that I think is really, really dope. If, if, if there's any hate, <laughs> I don't know who's on the call, who's adding all their friends that just don't like us, don't like us because we make so much money and we just impact too many people and we just have so much success and we're just actually living our fullest life and they're not. So I get it, I get it. But anyway, please screenshot this, share it everywhere. This is how to achieve success, right? Four things, you wanna lie, you wanna cheat, you wanna steal, and you wanna violate copyright, okay? I'm joking, let's actually get into it. Blueprint of success. Guys, when it comes to success, a lot of people, when I meet them, they're trying to reinvent if I'm gonna do this. Okay, cool, but have you done the basics before you do the extra stuff, right? Have you really tried to take a shortcut? If I see any successful person, in, in, in any industry, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna learn from them. So in business, you wanna almost, number one, lie to yourself. A lot of us don't achieve things because we don't think we deserve it. We don't think I can be that successful. I don't think I can make that much money. I don't think X, X Y, Z. So it's like, you gotta almost lie to yourself, not to people, but to yourself and speak life into yourself. Yes, I'm confident. Yes, I'm not gonna settle down. Yes, I deserve more. I don't know who you are. I don't, I don't know who you think you are telling me to downgrade. I should be your number one server where you give me every, all the shifts. I should be the, sometimes just gonna speak life into you. Because most people won't speak life into you because they don't see your potential until you actually make it, which is crazy, right? Uh, so number one, lie. Number two, cheat. Stop reinventing the wheels. You have so many mentors in this company that you can literally cheat from. Don't be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm copying them. Maybe, you know, I want to do my own thing. You are going to come with your own brand. You are going to be your own person. But in the beginning, it's okay to cheat. It's okay to copy their success. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to see exactly what they've done, to watch them, to stalk them, and do exactly similar to them to achieve what they have. Number three, steal. And this is basically, you know, master classes, courses, right? Guys, we have iGenius as a whole. So many knowledge. The fact that our highest membership is $1,500 and it can teach you about all the financial markets, y'all don't think that's stealing? That's stealing. That's robbery in, in daylight, right? I think they should increase the price. I think they should make it $10,000 course because guess what? People will take it more serious when they spend ten when they spend $10,000. But that's us stealing. Well, it's not really, but taking from people that have poured into a whole platform, right? About all the financial markets, live sessions, alerts, so much that you can literally steal and take it and make it your own. Keep it, get the knowledge and get successful. Number four, copyrights. Listen guys, copycats, we love them, right? We love them. I'm the biggest copycat, right? But I only copy the right cat. I don't be copying any cat. I copy the successful cat. I copy the billionaire cat. I be copying. I see something that I like. Guess what I'm doing? I'm writing it down. And guess what I do? I do it the same day. Oh, they posted about this. Guess what? I'm going to post about it. Oh, they did this real like this. Oh, guess what? I'm going to. Oh, wait, they invested in this. Yes, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not trying to rethink a lot of things. I'm just going to implement. Okay. But let's talk about our main topic uh, for today, which is how to fail. I feel like a lot of times we're talking about, oh, you know, successful people do this and successful people. Well, let's see how can we fail? Because if I know 
these are the things that if I do, I'm gonna fail. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we all are gonna try to avoid them and we're not gonna do them. So I think there are 20 principles um, that if you do, you're gonna fail, right? You're gonna fail. You're not gonna have success. It's not gonna work out for you. Life is gonna be real hard. Life is gonna be real bad for you. So here are the 20 steps to actually fail. Number one, right? Lack of a well-defined purpose. Y'all, I literally, like literally cannot stress this enough. Anyone that does not have a goal is going to fail 100%, period. Or is not going to get to that goal, which is failing, period. Out of every 100 people, 98 people don't know their goal. So only two people out of 100 people know what they're aiming for and know what their goals. And when I heard that statistic, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's crazy. So I, I remember asking someone that is very close to me and they're a leader. And I'm like, so what's your goal? And they're like, yeah, you, just, you know, I just want to make a lot of money. Well, what's a lot of money? Like, you know, as much as I can. What do you mean as much as you can? Like, as much as you can, it can be $10, it can be $100, it can be a million dollars. If you don't know what you're aiming for, what are we really shooting for? Where are we, tar like, what's the target, right? So make sure you are having a goal and that goal, you're writing it every single day because life happens, right? Things are going to be thrown at you, life, relationships, family. And throughout that, you want to remember, yo, this is my goal. This is what I set for this year. And I'm going to accomplish it regardless. And how I'm going to accomplish it by being accountable, by being disciplined, by doing all the right things to not fail. Right. So number one, I know it's small. And I know it sounds like, oh, basic, but most people don't know their goals. They don't know their weekly goals, their monthly goals, let alone their yearly goals. Number two, lack of ambition to aim above mediocrity. Yo, people are not willing to pay the price, period. People are not willing to pay the price. Everyone wants everything so easy. I swear someone the other day told me, I'm not, how can I turn 10,000 to a million dollars? I'm like, what? In what world? I wish that's true. I would have been a billionaire. I can turn all the millions and then what, right? People are not willing to pay the price. We know that, listen, how to get success, it's easy. It's easy steps. But what's easy is also easy not to do. It's so easy to watch a video about investing and trading. It's so easy to post on social media. It's so easy to do a call. But it's also easy not to do any of them. It's so easy. And you see people just settling for what they have or what they got. Number three, insufficient education. And when I say insufficient education, I'm not talking about university. I'm not talking about college. I'm not talking about, you know, you know, right? I'm talking about self-education. I'm talking about self-made. Like, look at 2022. Okay, I really want you to look at 22. And I want you to like almost analyze how did you spend 2022 learning? What did you learn? How, like, how, what's, what's the percentage of that what you learned? Did you implement it? What topics did I study about? Like, what's the knowledge that I acquired, right? Because we can just have years pass by and we're not learning and we're not studying because we're not in school, right? That's what I thought all the time. Like, oh, well, I'm not in school, so I can just like not learn, right? Why do I need to learn? It's, I can just try things. But it's like, you gotta be intentional with that stuff. I need to learn X, Y, Z. I want to get better. And it's not going to happen over, over a night. You're not going to be like, oh, wow, I'm so good overnight. But I promise you, if you read at least 20 pages a day, you listen to one podcast, you listen to like one value, I don't know, like video about like any topic that you're interested in on YouTube a day, within a year, people are going to realize when they talk to you how educated you are. Because people can tell when you're like really educated or when you're just like, you know, cute. And we don't want to be cute. We want to be educated. And we got to understand people are not paid for what they know. Because I know this. I've actually watched a TikTok about it the other day. And they said the people with the highest IQ are usually not 
successful. Not all the time, but usually they're not successful. Do you guys know why? The people with the highest IQ. Let me look at the chat. I'm actually not looking at the chat. Melina said it, right? They overthink. Every single time they think of a brilliant idea, guess what happens? They start overanalyzing it, overthinking about it, over making it perfect, over planning it, where they even talk themselves out of it because there are going to be a couple of things that are not going to make that plan perfect. And they end up never doing it. I've seen it with people that are in the same industry as me and they were perfectionists, right? And they were way ahead of, ahead of me, right? Better speakers, better presenters, better, um, you know, I don't know, education, better everything. But because they were perfectionists, I became so far ahead because all I do is I apply. I'm not overthinking nothing. I don't know if it's the Leo in me, but I don't think sometimes. We're just doing it, right? Research, boom, do. Research, do, boom. Oh, it was a failure, perfect. Okay, now we know what not what not to do. Oh, it was a success, perfect. Let's do more, right? I'm just doing it on it. I want to do it the first. I don't want to do it the best. I want to do it the first. Does that click with a lot of y'all? I don't want to do it the best. I want to do it the first. So you want to make sure um, you actually, what's it called? Let me do this. You actually take risks. Number four, lack of self-discipline. A lot of people have zero discipline, right? Um, I remember when, when I started in the beginning of, of my journey, um, I would see people like partying on a Saturday and Friday night, and I would feel so much FOMO. I'm like, oh my God, I just, I feel like I need to go see my friends. I feel like this. And it's like, once you get into the discipline of like, no, this, these are my goals. I know most people are not going to achieve their goals. Matter of fact, 97%, 99% of people are not going to achieve their goals. And that's a lot of people. If you guys think of, of the percentages, that's a lot of people. If all those people are not going to achieve their goals, perfect. I got to do the opposite. Whatever they're doing, I got to not do it. Whatever they're not doing, I got to do it. It's literally simple math if you think about it. We got to do it. And it's not going to just you doing it once. You got to do it over and over and over again. Self-discipline is probably literally the hardest thing to master. But once you master it, you become so powerful. You wake up, you're like, I don't feel like it. No one cares if none. Uh, we're doing it. No one cares if you're tired. No one cares if you're sore. No one cares if you're upset. No one cares if you're dramatic. No one cares. Like literally no one cares. So just get it done regardless. Number five. Ill health, right? Um, this is not really business related, but y'all take care of your health. Go walk around the block, eat healthy. We all know when we don't eat good, we don't feel good, right? Like when we eat the non-good stuff, we actually don't feel good. I feel always good when after I work out, I feel always good when I move my body. So make sure you have the good health. Make sure you put yourself into some activities every single day, even if you don't want to work out, that will get you moving. Move, move. I promise you, it changes everything. Number six, 100% health as well. Um, number six, unfavorable environmental influence during childhood. Guys, listen, I get it. A lot of us are born in places or with people or with families or with societies that are not so good right? And you can become like them. And most likely you are going to become like them, right? Unless you really are aware of like, whoa, this is what they do to get there. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go the same route. You got to be aware. Once you're aware, everything changes, but you got to be aware. We got to know that I come from that background and maybe it's instilled in me because I've lived with those people for many, many years. Maybe I got to unlearn a lot of things. I got to unlearn a lot of things and then start learning some things. Number seven, right? Procrastination. This is really, really something that we all suffer with, like real bad. Guys, if you write something on your journal, please do it the same day. I literally have a rule. I'm not going to sleep until it's done. I, I can't. Like, I literally, I would put my head on. I'm like, I can't sleep. I can't 
thinking about it. I feel like a little fish because I wrote it down and I can't do it. I need to do it. I would literally guilt chop myself because I wrote something down and I didn't do it. But guess what happens when you do it? I mean, when you don't do it once, next day you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to do it today. Today's the day. And then end of day comes and you don't do it. And you're like, it's okay. I'm just going to do it tomorrow. And then end of day tomorrow comes and you end up never doing it or maybe doing it when it's like on the deadline, like deadline tomorrow, 8 a.m. You're doing it at 7 a.m. And the more you do that, the less you start trusting yourself because your word means nothing to you. Everything you said you're going to do, you ain't doing it. You say you're going to do X, Y, Z. You're not doing it. So you stop trusting yourself. You stop being confident. You stop being courageous because you're like, I don't, I don't trust my word. Imagine having a man or a woman, right? And all they say, babe, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this for you. I'm, and a year passed by. My guy, you have not done nothing. I have not seen but yapa yapa. You have not done anything. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go through a breakup. Because I don't trust your word. You're going to tell me I'm going to do this. I am like, you're not going to do it. I already seen the pattern. I already can tell you that you're not going to do it. Save your words. We're done. Bye-bye. I'm out of here. But you stop trusting them and their word means nothing, right? It's the same when people tell you, oh, I love you, but then they talk bad about you. You hear someone tell you, I love you so much. You're like, the soul of my heart. Like, I can't live without you. And then they talk bad about you behind your back. You're like, my God. First time, second time, third time. You're like, I don't believe that you love me. You're just saying it. I don't trust that word. So be very careful of what you're writing on your journal, what you're saying you're going to do on your to-do list. And don't write it unless you you know that you're going to do it. And don't procrastinate, procrastinate, whatever the word is. I can't even say it. Right? So that's number seven. Number eight, lack of persistence. Guys, most of us, my mom used to always tell me this, are so good at starting things. I can, I swear, the other day, one of my leaders sent me like a girl that have been in like seven companies so far. It was the funniest thing ever. It's so easy to start things. I can, anyone can start anything. Oh, I'm going to start this. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to start a TikTok page. I'm going to start a clothing line. I'm going to start investing. But do we follow through until it's done? I don't want to ever start something and not finish it. My mom used to always tell me, Afnan, because, I had a lot of like small side hustles when I was like really young. I'm like, oh, I want to be like an accessory designer. And we would go buy all the accessories, like things. And I would like put it together. And then I'm like, I don't want to do it. And she's like, I don't trust you anymore because every single time you start something, you never finish it. And when I started this business, my mom was literally telling me, Afnan, don't be like the old you where you start something and never finish it because you're going to make your brother look bad. I'm like, whoa. Well, we don't want to look Rokan look, we don't want to make Rokan look bad because that's not going to end up well. We're going to have to do it, right? And that really hit deep when I got started. I'm like, if I'm doing this, I'm doing this. It, we're like all in. We're not like, you know what I mean? So persistence, um, I, I read it actually on my, on my journal of a single day. I'm so happy and grateful that I am resilient and I am persistent. Like nothing can knock me down. Whatever you do, whatever you say, mm -mm -mm. you just can't. You just can't, right? So that's eight. Number nine, negative personality. Have you guys ever been around people that are so negative? You're like, whoa, get out of here. Get, like, I can feel my life is negative, like, like dark aura around them. You can feel it. It's like, whoa, okay, that, that went bad. Okay, we can fix it. Oh, no, we can't fix it. Okay. Okay, stay away because your toxic energy, I can feel it from a mind. Get away. You can, they literally, everything is, there's nothing, solution, everything is problem, 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 problem. And me personally, my mind works the solution. To all my friends, to all my team members, please don't ever come to me complaining just to vent because venting does not work with me. I'm not that type of girl. If you're going to vent to me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to find solutions. Okay, so this happened. Okay, let's do this. And if you're just trying to vent, I'm going to look like I'm trying to like, you know, run up all your business. Right. Right. I say real bad, real away from that, from those people. Skip the problem. What's the game? Of course. Because as soon as they tell me, I'm like, okay, solution. But I had to train my mind 
If you guys hear me all the time, I say, speak what you seek, speak what you seek, speak what you seek, right? I would say when, when we were in Miami, in Miami, me and Crystal, sometimes I would say things like, oh, I'm just so tired today. And it's like, whoa, 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 it's people you seek. I'm not tired. I'm a little bit, you know, underslept, but we're, we're going to get it done, right? Your words are so powerful. Make sure you are using the right words. Oh, I'm so broke. Whoa, whoa. Don't say you're so broke that's going to become your reality, right? So think of solutions. Speak of things that you actually want to happen in your life. Number 10, uncontrollable this desire for something for nothing. This is all of us. I can't lie. This is all of us. Every single one on this call, every single one, right? How many times people are like, well, you know, how can I make the most amount of money? Do you want to know how much how much money you want to make, or do you want to know what's the work that's going to require to make most most more money? Because you can't make all that money with no with with no like you putting in something. So you gotta put in something, right? I mean, how can I make ten thousand? Well, are you gonna put in work, or well, are you gonna be putting in money? Because sometimes it's just maybe putting money to make money, but it's not gonna be a hundred dollars. So we got to get out of that mindset of like, oh, I just want to take from the world. I want to take from the world. I want to take everything get this, this, and never give. It's not going to happen. And if it does happen, it doesn't last. Look at gambling, right? People maybe sometimes win the lottery, right? They win the lottery. That's what happens. They all file, they all file bankruptcy, all of them. Why? Because they received it for nothing. They spent a couple of dollars, scratched it, boom, they won millions of dollars. So the something for nothing mentality we get to remove in 2023. 11, lack of a well-defined power of decision. I see this all the time. People take years to make a decision, months to make a decision. And we gotta understand successful people make decision fast and they change their mind slow. Unsuccessful people take years, months, weeks to make a decision. And they change your mind very quickly. If you come to me with any opportunity, with anything, if the, the team knows me, we did a USA tour. I'm like, yeah, we're doing it in two weeks. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, why are we planning in like four months? Four months is so far. I'm not planning for four months. I'm going to have maybe like an idea. But like, if we're planning it, we're doing it in two weeks. Let's go. And it's like, okay, we're, we're doing it. I'm not trying to wait. But that's... Uh, um, a quality that all successful people have. Urgent. We feel like we're, we can die anytime. Life is going to end anytime. So I'm trying to maximize, it, like do the most in the time that I have. I want to achieve the most. Oh, I can get success anytime. No, I want to get success yesterday, today. But I'm going to put in the work to achieve that. So act with urgency. Make decisions. Be sure of the decisions, even if you're not sure of the decisions. And this really goes to when I was telling the, the, my bosses, I don't downgrade. I knew that I was not sure from the inside, but from the outside, I told him I don't downgrade. You downgrade me, I quit, period. And he's like, wow, she really knows what she wants. I'm like, no, I don't. But you, you, you thought I did, right? Number 12, over caution. Y'all know those people that need all the facts. Like I need a list of, like sometimes even when people tell me, I what do you do? And I send them the video and they're like, can you send me like a whole breakdown on, you, on the email? I'm like, yeah, don't, don't get started. It's okay. It's okay. Just don't get started. It's not for you. You want a whole breakdown in the email word by, are you, are you okay? Who's sending you that email? Cause I'm not sending an email. It's a DM. If I like you, I'm gonna give you my number. That, that's about it. If I, if I really like you, we're gonna do a call 10, 15 minutes. What are, we, what are we talking about? Try it 10 days. You don't like it. Get a refund period. Like, what are we talking about? Because I might tell you all the answers and you're still going to be confused because you have no idea about investing and trading. So why does it matter? Try it, right? A lot of us are so cautious. We're like, oh, I don't want to make a mistake. Well, the only way to get to success is to make mistakes. So I got to know if I want to get to success, I just got to make a lot of mistakes. I just got to fail a bunch of times. People try to separate success and failure. And we got to understand that success and failure, they're in the same sentence. You can't have success without failure. So if you don't want to be, if you don't want to fail, you're just be okay with not having success. End of discussion. I don't want to fail. Perfect. Then just go work at a job that pay you just enough for you to breathe, I guess. 
I can relate. Number 13, wrong selections of associates in business. Be very careful who you do business with because people will drain your energy. Last year, I had people, I'm like, oh, I'm such a bubbly, happy person. You're sucking the life out of me. If it's going to cost me thousands of dollars to not have you in my life, perfect. I prefer my peace. I prefer, you know, my happiness, me, me being bubbly, me being myself. And if that's the, the energy that you bring, we're not having this. I would rather sacrifice the money because I know I'm going to be making way more money if I just be myself, my authentic self. So be very careful who you do business with. I'm not trying to do business with A, B, C, A, B, and C. I'm trying to do business with solid people. And that, that goes to your, toward, you know, the people that you're learning from. Make sure you're learning from the right people. Sometimes people learn from people that have no idea what they're talking about. And it's like, what are we doing here? Blind leading the blind? Where are we gonna, where are we gonna reach? Blind leading the blind, where are we gonna go? 14, superstition and prejudice, right? Superstition is a form of fear. Also, a sign of ignorance. People who succeed keep an open mind and are afraid of nothing. You know how sometimes of, uh, people like, I've seen it even in, in our business where people are like, yeah, job shipping don't work. Yeah, this don't work. Yeah, you know, uh, Toro don't, like just bashing every other business but their business. And it's like, nothing works but your business. And it's like, listen, we know our business is probably the, the, the lowest cost, the easiest way, the fastest way to, to be successful and to make a lot of money. But like, it's not the only way. If you have a lot of money, there's other ways. Um, oh, I always have an open mind in business, in making money, in people. I'm, I'm like, okay, yeah, let's try it. If I've never tried it. If people told me, oh, it does not work, I'm like, perfect, let me try it. Back to the point where most people are not successful. So why am I listening to most people? Unless you have what I want. And sometimes even if you have what I want, I'm, I'm going to try it. Because what if I make more than you, right? But have an open mind always. Oh, I'm not good at this. Well, have you tried it? You're not going to know if you're good at this if you haven't tried it. Oh, if not, I'm not good at talking on my camera. Well, have you tried it? It might be the best thing that you have ever done in your life. If not, I'm not so good with TikToks and Reels. Well, have you tried it? Maybe it's the thing that's going to change your life. Number 15, lack of concentration. Oh, this is so good. Lack of concentration of effort. I can't stress this enough. People want to do everything. They want to open 10 businesses thinking they're going to have passive income. And I've seen it from experience. Once you focus on one thing, like when you have the mentality of this is the only thing that I want to make work and I will keep working on it until it works, it works on a whole massive level. Because I've tried doing a bunch of little stuff and it just never ends up being like something massive. You feel lost. You feel like, what am I doing? Which one is this? And you never have big success in any of them. Small success, small success, no success, small success. One thing, make a lot of money with it. And then once you have a lot of money, then you can maybe have other things that you can delegate with the money and have money working for you and other different passive incomes. That's cool. I'm not saying just do one thing forever, but make sure you focus on it. Guys, this business, when I started, first of all, for the past two and a half years, Afnan did not look right, Afnan did not look left. This is the only thing that matters. This is the only thing that I want to do. This is the only thing that makes the most amount of money. And I made a lot of freaking money by just being so focused, so obsessed on one thing. Now, when we have the money, okay, well, let's do this. Let's do real estate. Let's do whatever. Let's do it because you have the money and you can just pay people to do it for you and not use spending effort on it. Does that make sense? When we're, when we're broke, we're trying to save on every single dollar and it's taking all our effort, all our mind. Number 16, the habit of indiscriminate spending. This is really, really important. <laughs> you, have to watch out, you have to watch out for your broke. I feel like I haven't spoken English in so long, I forgot my English. Like someone would teach me English. Guys, I know some people that would rather walk 10 minutes with heels rather than pay $15 for a valet. 
guys, we gotta watch out for our broke for our I can't literally can't talk for our broke thoughts. A lot of us were holding to the dollar and the dollar and the dollar and the dollar, and we're not letting go to the point where the thousands of dollars don't even have space no more because you're holding to the small little pennies and the dollars where there's no more space for the big money to come. You gotta let money go sometimes. Like let it go and it will come back tenfold, but let it go. And I'm not saying don't spend it on like, you know, go spend it on like crazy stuff. I'm saying stop being so, I know people that are making so much money, but they act like they have not $1 in their bank account. I'm like, what's happening here? What's happening? Why are we like broke thoughts will keep you broke. Broke thoughts will keep you broke. I have such an abundant mind, mindset where I know everything I spend will come a hundred X to me, whatever it is. So I don't stress about money. I work very hard to earn my money. I work very smart. I'm very dedicated. So I know money will always come to me. Number 17, lack of enthusiasm. Guys, you know, a lot of people are always trying to convince others of what they think or what they believe, right? And people can tell when you're trying to convince them. Have you ever tried to convince a friend about something and you're like, okay, I'm not convinced. But people are only going to be convinced if you believe in what you're saying. Real story. Sometimes I say crazy stuff to Sayana, but I'm so confident that it is right. I'm like, Sayana, of course, like this is how it's, it's supposed to be. This is the word. This is what it means. And she's like, oh, wait, maybe it is. And then she Googles it. She's like, Fran, what are you talking about? Everything you said is wrong. I'm like, oh, damn. But she's like, I almost believed you because you were so confident. You had such enthusiasm. So anything you do, anything you say, do it with a lot of confidence, do it with a lot of enthusiasm and watch the world believe you. I'm not saying lie, but like just have more enthusiasm in life and people will want to do business with you. I'm telling you, sometimes I say the craziest things to Santa. Oh, like, I, I think the statistic for this, 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 this. And she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. And then she looks it up. She's like, I'm not, it's not. I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Number 18 right? Inability to co cooperate with others. Guys, if you're not a likable person, if you're like in the corner all the time, if you have like a, like a, uh, what's the word? RBF. Do you guys know what RBF is? Can anyone guess what RBF is? That's for my girls. You guys don't know what's RBF? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Resting, be face, right? A lot of us girls, like sometimes I'm at the gym. I'm like, no wonder no one comes talk to me because I'm like, I look like I'm gonna murder someone. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And I'm, anytime someone looks at me, I'm like, you know, of course no one's gonna talk to you. If not, you look like you're very unapproachable. And I had to tell even my friend, not my friend, some of my leaders, I remember like two years ago, I'm like, when you walk to events, no one say hi to you because you look like, sad you look like you have an ego you're like stuck up so sometimes you gotta put an effort to actually smile and actually look like you're approachable and you're having fun and if you don't know how to be approachable and how to cooperate with others go read a book guys there's a lot of books that will teach you how to be likable what's that what's what's my favorite book how to win friends and influence people guys you read that book somehow everyone's want to be your friend everyone want to be around you right? Someone said, look, <laughs> you guys are funny. So learn if you don't have that skill set, if you're not naturally like a, like a person people, go learn how to be a person people. I promise you, it pays you the most amount of money when you know how to deal with people and how to be approachable. I've made millions just being at, at, at events and just looking approachable. Like, hi, so nice to see you. What's your name? We end up doing business together after. And so it's 19, obviously ego, right? Um, people can smell ego. And again, there's a big difference between, I, I don't want us to think, oh, I should not have an ego. No, you should have a little bit of an ego. You should know that, hey, maybe, you know, I'm, I work so hard on myself. So I have that little bit of an ego that, hey, yes, I'm going to achieve everything that I say. Of course, I'm going to do it. If, you, if I said I'm going to do it, it's done. But not to the point where people don't want to be around you because it's always about you. You're so self-centered. You're so X, Y, Z. Like you're just, 
negative vibes, you know what I mean? So have a little bit of ego, healthy ego, but not over egotistical. Number 20, guessing instead of thinking. And again, guys, if people are like, what, what are those numbers? These are the things that if you do, you're going to fail. These are 20 steps on how to achieve failure. So if you follow those steps, boom, we achieve failure, right? So guessing instead of thinking. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, I've heard this person say X, Y, Z, and I think it's not good. Oh, you know, I just think I'm not good at it. Well, oh, I just think like, um, you know, crypto is, is done. Like it's, it's not going to go up in the next year. Oh, I just think NFTs was like a fad. Who's telling you all of this? People literally lie and believe their own lies. Did you guys know that? People literally will lie and believe their own lies and then let others believe their own lies. That's crazy. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, damn, you're so wrong. And you're sharing the wrong message with such confidence. Listen, I know I told you guys to be confident in everything you're saying and have enthusiasm, but not when you're wrong or like totally wrong in a way where it would literally affect someone else. So be very, very careful on making decisions just based on guessing instead of actually taking the time to make research. I'm not saying like extensive research, research hours, days, do some research, right? Um, and we're going to end it with a couple of questions that questions you should ask yourself in 2023, right? Uh, I need you guys to write these questions down because you got to reflect, right? How you get better in life is not by, oh, I just, I just keep doing it. Sometimes you're doing something a lot and it's not working in your favor and you miss it because you have not like studied what you're doing or analyzed what you're doing you have not paid attention you're just doing a bunch of random stuff not really paying attention to what really works and what really does not work because some things are going to work more long term but we know it's the right thing to do so these are some questions that are going to be very very helpful to make your 2023 really really better than 2022 and from all the years that we've lived before. So number one, you wanna ask yourself, have I attained the goal which I established as my obje objective for this year, right? So this really goes to 2022. I gotta look at myself, I'm like, Afnan, have you achieved the goal that you wrote down? No, we have not. Okay, why have, not, why have we not? What are the things that we did that we can fix? And what are the things that we did not do that we should have done that would have helped with us achieving our goal? We can't just rub it off. Oh, okay, like oh, this year is going to be a better year. 2020 was so hard. Uh, no, like I'm trying to learn here to get to my desired destination faster. I'm trying to really analyze and study myself. Number two, have I delivered? This is really important. Have I delivered service of the best possible quality, quality of which I was capable? Question mark. Could I have improved any part of the service? Guys, we know what we do is services, right? So every single time I deliver the service to people, whether it's a message through social media, whether it's a TikTok, a reel, a mentorship, a one-on-one, -on -one, have I given that person or that time the best quality I could have done at that time? Not the best quality ever, because we don't know what's the best quality ever. Have I given the best quality at that time? And then the third thing is, have I delivered the greatest service and the greatest possible quantity of which I was capable of? So yes, I did the best, but also quantity matters. Have I done it a lot of times or did I just do one good quality service? So it's quality, but also quantity. We know this is a numbers game and I got to go through the numbers with giving my best every single time. And my best today will be better tomorrow, period. Right? Someone said, what was two? Have I delivered service of the best possible quality of which I was capable? And could I have improved any part of the service? Number four, have I permitted the habit of procrastination to the, uh, I don't think this is the right one. I was voice recording guys, but did I, did, did procrastinate, I can't even say the word, procrastination affect my 2020? And if it did, when did it, when, it, when did it do that? What was my emotions that led to that? What was I feeling? Was I feeling sad? Was I feeling unmotivated? Like you got to know what's your triggers that are causing you to not do the things that you said you're going to do. 
and you gotta study it. And sometimes, because listen, when 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 we're not feeling our best, when we're upset or whatever, guess what usually happens? Like our mind gets so cloudy, right? And we can't think straight. And then you look back at it, like after a day, you're like, why was I acting like that? It was so weird. But when we're going through that, we're not thinking straight. So I actually have a book that says, well, like one of the pages is what to do when you're not motivated, what to do when you're feeling down, what to do. Like I literally have things written down. So let's say I wake up, I'm not motivated. Sometimes you forget what you should do. And I just go to my book and I'm like, okay, this is what I should do. Boom. I, I should work out. I should take an hour nap and save the world from the pessimism that's going around me. I should read a book. I should just open this podcast um, and listen to it. Like make it specific so you just do it without thinking and it will make you feel better. Name of the book. No, like I write it in my notes. Like guys, my, no, my notes, like no, not someone. Maybe I should write a book. Like my notes, I write it down. You, cause we, we're all different. Some people get happy when they work out. Some people get happy when they dance. I don't know, when they put their favorite song. Or, so you got to find what really makes you happy and write it down so you don't forget it. And then when you go through emotions, you just go and like, okay, this is what makes me, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to think about it. Does that make sense? Number five, have I improved my personality? And if so, in what ways? You got to become a likable person. You got to know how to work with others, how to cooperate with others. So I'm always working on myself because I'm the money. People want to get attracted to me. How can I get better? While I work on my other skill sets, right? Investing, trading, network marketing. But am I a likable person? Am I good? Like, am I really, really good? Right? So work on your personality. It's really, really important. Number six, have I been persistent and following my plans? until it's done. Oh, well, I did this, but I didn't finish it. I really said I'm going to finish it. Like, for example, for example, last year, 2022, I said I'm going to do one reel a day every single day for 365 days. I did it like the first seven months and then I grew my following and then I'm like, ah, I don't want to do it anymore. And I stopped doing it. The year before, I did a lot of TikToks and I grew my following and I brought a lot of value. We inspired a lot of people, but then you get there and like, oh, I'm stop doing it. And you stop doing it. So I'm, I'm persistent in some areas, but to an extent. So I got to really take notes of those things. Okay, I found you, you didn't finish it. Like me thinking, if I've been posting on TikTok since, when did we start posting? Um, after GoPro 20 end of 2020 yes so from 2021 until today i promise you guys if i posted one tiktok all those times i would have probably been like at a million followers if not more right and that would have contributed to more people looking at what i do on social media on instagram but but we don't think like that because i was so on it like every single day every single day and then you gain the followers and then you stop you get a little bit, you get a little bit of success, you get a, a taste and then you stop. So you got to really think about it. I would have probably 100% million followers by now, but we don't finish things. We like starting things. So 2023, we're not doing that. Have I ever been overcautious or undercautious? Because they're both bad, right? Overcautious, undercautious. You want to have the perfect balance perfect balance you don't want to think things to the fullest where you just not, never end up doing it number eight i swear I, I, i'm writing I'm, I'm reading all those things i'm like i found this is not english have i yeah remind me next time to not voice record everything anyway i think that's how have i wasted right have i wasted any of my energy through lack of concentration of effort we all know if I just concentrate on one thing, I'm going to be so good. So when I got distracted, what, what were the things that distracted me? Who are the people that distract? Sometimes it's people. It's not even things. What are the things? What are the people? Who are those people that we're going to cut out this year? Guys, you won't even believe it. I literally, you know, I'm not going to say names, um, but 
before this year started, I, I have a book where I wrote like 17 pages of things that I want to accomplish, things that I want to do in 2023. It's like a booklet, right? And then I literally said, people to not ever talk to in 2023. We're blocking them. We're cutting them off because this is toxic energy that's being recycled and we're not having that anymore. And I literally have names like this name, this name, this name. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Like we're not contributing. Bye-bye. And we're like, oh, well, you know, that's so insensitive. Yes, perfect. Because it's distracting me. And if someone is distracting us from our potential, cut, period. And then number nine, <laughs> yes, so have someone ever, um, well, anyone that have purchased any of my services for the year, right? Oh, no, if I have been the purchaser of my own service for the year, would I have been satisfied? So a lot of you guys that have big teams or have recruited one person, two person, three, whatever it is, right, have helped someone get started, you got to really look at it. Be like, okay, how can I increase our retention and get people to really plug in and do what we do to the fullest? How can I get them involved in the culture more? How can I really help them be consistent? Because we know, you know, the hardest thing for people is to be consistent and we got to train them a little bit. But if someone have sold me the same service that I'm selling them, right? With everything that comes with, because service is, is cool, but the mentorship, the coaching, the way I'm showing up, would I be satisfied? What would I rate that service? So make sure you evaluate that too, right? Sometimes you got to hear things that you don't want to hear to actually get better. And then number 10, what is my presence? Wait, what is this of none? Uh, fundamental, fundamental. Oh, wrong English. That's the last one, wrong English. But you, you got to look at, have I persistent with everything that I know that is going to get me success? Because we know what's going to get us success, right? Discipline, persistent, resilience, doing the, the, the easy things that we know we should do. Have I been consistent with those things day in, day out? Because we said it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one thing to know what you should do. A lot of people know what they should do. And it's another thing to actually do what you know you should do. A lot of us, oh, I know I, know I should do this but I'm not doing it. So why does it matter? Does that make sense? What's the ninth question? Great question. Um, I forgot. That's when you have, you can't focus. Um, it was, if I was, if I had been the purchaser of my own services for the year, would I have been satisfied of the purchase? Perfect. But does that make sense, guys? So me personally, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about me. I love always being in action. I love always being in like the, the go, 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 go. But sometimes you got to slow down to speed up. Sometimes I got to look at, okay, Afnan, what have we been doing if we have not reached the goal that we said we're going to do? What have we been doing and what have we not been doing? Because we can all talk. Oh, I want to do this. But like, I'm trying to be about it, y'all. I'm trying to be about it. If I want to make a million dollars a month, every single month, it's not going to happen with this version that you see today. I have a lot to grow, a lot to accomplish, a lot to do before we get there. I can't assume that, oh, I'm just going to keep doing the same exact thing that I've got with seven figures to get seven figures a month. It's not going to happen, period. I got to really work on my craft. I got to be aware. I got to get better. I got to be so consistent. I got to think bigger. And how do I think bigger? I got to read more. I got to get more knowledge, more education. I got to surround myself by people that have what I want. So I see and I watch what they're, what they're doing. If you've been around me, you know, I stalk people, but I don't stalk anyone. I stalk people that I want to really become. Like in a creepy way, I like study people. This week we're studying this person and I like duplicate everything they do. And sometimes they're not even in the same industry. When I started, it was, yes, my mentors, my coaches. And then you get to higher levels and you're like, they're doing real estate, but we're, we're, we're copying whatever I can take from them. You will never reach your goals unless you work on you. You're the brand. 
you are the person that you have to get so good to actually achieve everything that you want. Let me ask you guys a real question. I need you guys to be honest with me. Do you think the version of you today, the way you show up, the way you speak, <coughs> the way you present yourself, the energy you have, the persistence, the discipline, do you think that you deserve to be making six figures? Be honest with me. Someone said, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Who said yes? Let me, let me, let me read the yeses. I'm going to have a talk with you all, all the yeses. We're going to have a talk after. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not yet. So if I know the version of me don't deserve it, what in the, like, I know I said we got to have audacity, but like, this is between us, God and the universe. Like this is, there's no audacity. You know what I mean? Like you got to actually do the thing. You got to actually become that person. So if I know I'm, and I can promise you, because I've seen this happen to me and many others, people that maybe they got lucky and they got to the six figures and you can tell the skill set, the personality, the confidence did, did not match the income. On my life, they lost it. A couple months later, lost it, went all the way back until they actually made sure they earned it and they deserved it. They worked on themselves. So if we know all I have to do is work on myself to get to whatever where I want to be, why are we not working on ourselves? Why are we doing the things that we know is going to make us money? It's so simple, right? But this mind and emotion and heart of us really like messes up, messes us up. It really messes us up and growth never stops. You're always going to have to grow. You're always going to have to get better and get, you know, more skill sets. I'm t and, and listen, you know, when people tell you, oh, don't be hard, hard on yourself. No, yeah, be hard on yourself. Like, I'm like the heart. I'm like, no, what did, we, what did you do there? Like, what was that? Like, I'm embarrassed. You're literally embarrassing me right now. Fix up. I literally talk to myself like that. I'm not bashing myself, right? I'm not saying bad stuff, but I'm like, you're embarrassing us right now. I've not go read a book and learn how to talk better. I've not go listen to a podcast and see how they present. I've not go do this to actually learn this. You're literally embarrassing us. You're saying, oh, you want all those things, but you're not showing up as the person that you want to become. So 2023, let's, let's make sure we're not embarrassing ourselves. And we're not really like, I'm, I'm tired of being embarrassed. Tired. Tired. I don't want to talk about it. I want to be about it. You know that TikTok? I want to be about it. I really do. So with that being said, guys, uh, it's the end of a beautiful week and it's the start of a new week, right? And, you know, whatever happened the past two weeks, we're going to just like, I can't see, you know, that I'm, I, I was recording TikTok, so all the TikToks are in my head right now. I can't see, I, I can't see, I can't see. Whatever happened the past two weeks, we can't see. We're just going to get better. We're going to get 1% better. And then within a year, we're not going to even know who we are Yes, because I'm blind. I'm blind. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, spending too much time on TikTok. Too much time. <laughs> so let's make sure the next, well, the last two weeks of this month, February, March, April, we're just getting better, right? You're just, you can't just get better in one day. Oh, I'm going to fix my life in one day. No, it's going to be gradual, slowly. But we're going to get better. But you just got to be aware of it. You got to write your goals down every single day. You got to talk to your mentors. You got to be present. You got to do the things that we know we're going to do, the easy things. And with that being said, guys, I love you guys. Happy Sunday. I wish us all, let's, let's do a prayer. God, you know, in 2023, I wish everyone on this call at least a million dollars to show up in their bank account. I wish us all the, the most amount of skill sets, the most amount of confidence, the most amount of courage the happiest life, the most fulfilling. I hope that we all change millions and millions of lives and we never come across anyone that we can't impact and we impact every single person that we talk to. I pray we find love. <laughs> I pray we find love, amazing friendships, peace, and everything that our heart desires. Thank you, God. Amen. Inshallah. I mean. That's what we say in Eric. I mean, anyway, guys, with that being said, I love you guys. And uh, let's have a beautiful crushing week. 
Remember, you create your energy, you create your reality, and you create the money that you want to attract. I love you guys. Have a beautiful Sunday. I can't see I'm blind. That's, that was a TikTok. Blind.